Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. If you're watching this series from the beginning, we have discussed why Active Directory is required for Exchange Server. We installed Active Directory domain controller. We talked about DNS records. We discussed Exchange Server architecture. We talked about the system requirements and prerequisites for Exchange 2019 installation. And then we installed Exchange 2019 on Windows Server 2019 data center machine. In this particular video, we will be talking about virtual directories in Exchange Server. We will configure internal and external URLs for virtual directories, and we will create DNS records in local DNS server so that users can access Exchange services from internal network. When we install Exchange 2019, it automatically configures multiple virtual directories. A virtual directory is used by Internet Information Services or IIS to allow access to a web application. For example, Exchange ActiveSync, Outlook Web App, or the AutoDiscover service. You can access or modify these virtual directories from either Exchange Admin Center or from PowerShell. So first, let me show you how to access and modify these virtual directories from Exchange Admin Center. To access Exchange Admin Center, you will go to Start, then look for Microsoft Exchange Server 2019, and then click Exchange Administrative Center. Click on this, and then log in with Administrator Credentials. So once you are logged in, go to Servers, and then go to Virtual Directories. Under Virtual Directories section, you will see eight virtual directories. So let's talk about these virtual directories one by one, and let's understand the function of each virtual directory. The first virtual directory is AutoDiscover. This is the endpoint that hosts the XML file that is used by Outlook and ActiveSync clients to find the exchange settings for a user mailbox. ECP or Exchange Control Panel is a virtual directory that hosts the website that is used to access Exchange Admin Center. EWS or Exchange Web Services is one of the most important virtual directories. Some of the services or the features those are provided by EWS virtual directories are calendar sharing with external users, free busy, out of office messaging, and connecting third party applications with the client's mailbox. Mappy Virtual Directory is used by the Outlook client to connect to the user mailbox. Microsoft Server Active Sync Virtual Directory is used by the mobile devices to connect to the user mailbox. Next virtual directory is OAB. OAB stands for Offline Address Book. This virtual directory hosts XML file that contain a copy of Exchange Organization's global address list. This offline address book is used by the Outlook clients when you are working offline in Outlook or you are in disconnected mode. Next virtual directory is OWA or Outlook Web App. This virtual directory hosts the web-based Outlook website that is used by the users to access their mailboxes. PowerShell Virtual Directory provides admins with remote access to the Exchange Management Shell. Exchange Management Shell is a PowerShell from where an admin can manage Exchange Server. All of these virtual directories except AutoDiscover have internal and external URL. The internal URL will be used by the users when they will be accessing Exchange services from domain joint machines or from internal network and external URL will be used by the users while accessing these services from the Internet. Internal and external URLs can be same, or you can change them as per your requirement. But one thing you need to know that the name that you are going to use within the URLs, for example, exchange.office365concepts.com, or you are using mail.office365concepts.com, these names should match the certificate subject alternate name that you are going to deploy for Exchange Server. So either you can leave these URLs as it is, or you can change it as per your requirement. 
for example instead of exchange i need mail.office365concepts.com so what you need to do copy this and paste it in external url as well it completely depends on you if you want the same url for internal and external users or you need a different url so let's save this and we will make same changes in all the virtual directories so let's remove exchange type mail and save it let's change for all the virtual directories So now we have changed the internal and external URL for all the virtual directories. Now let's try to access OWA. Let's copy the URL, paste it in browser. So as of now, I'm not able to access OWA. And the reason is when a client will try to access OWA service or any service for Exchange Server, that request will go to DNS Server. As of now, there is no DNS record created in local DNS server. So before we use these services, we need to create a DNS record for these services. So let's go to domain controller. Let me close this and let's go to domain controller. Let's go to server manager. Go to tools DNS. Go to forward lookup zone and click on your Active Directory domain. Now here we will create a record for mail.office365concepts.com because we have changed the internal and external URLs to mail.office365concepts.com. The same URL is mentioned in every single virtual directory. So the users will try to access this service mail.office365concepts.com. So there has to be a record in DNS server for this particular service. So let's go to DNS. To create a record in DNS server, we will right click and then click new host. Under name, we will mention mail. This will automatically take it as mail.office365concepts.com. Now here we will mention the internal IP address or the private IP address of Exchange Server, and that is 192.168.1.45. Add host. This A record is created. Now let's go to command prompt. And let's check if this is resolving set q equal a and then type mail.office365concepts.com enter and here you can see this is resolving to the private ip address of exchange server now let's go back to exchange server and let's try to access owa and the url is https mail.office365concepts.com slash OWA. So now we are able to access OWA. You are getting this error because as of now there is no certificate binded in Exchange Server. So this communication is not secured. So let's go to advanced. 
and proceed to mail.office365concepts.com. And here we can access OWA. So let's log in. As of now, I do not have any other user apart from administrator. So let's log in with admin account. Here, let's select the time zone. Click save. So now we can access OWA for this particular mailbox. If you go to Exchange Admin Center, as of now, the URL says localhost slash ECP. You can even access Exchange Control Panel or Exchange Admin Center with this URL. Let me show you this. Let's close this and let's go to browser. Now let's type ECP URL, that is mail.office365concepts dot com slash ECP press enter. So we are redirected to Exchange Admin Center login. And this is how you can access Exchange Admin Center. Now look at the URL. URL says HTTPS mail dot office 365 concepts dot com slash ECP. You can manage these virtual directories from PowerShell as well. I have shown you how to manage these virtual directories from Exchange Admin Center. If you want to manage these from PowerShell, go to Microsoft Exchange Server 2019 and then go to Exchange Management Shell. Exchange Management Shell is the PowerShell from where administrators can manage the Exchange Server. If you want to check OWA virtual directory, for example, you can run get hyphen OWA virtual directory pipe FL. This command will list all the properties of OWA virtual directory. So here you can see all the properties of this virtual directory. Same way, if you want to manage ECP virtual directory, you will run get hyphen ECP virtual directory pipe FL. This will list all the properties of ECP virtual directory. If you want to modify any property within ECP virtual directory, for that you will run set hyphen ECP virtual directory hyphen identity. Under identity, you will mention the name of the virtual directory. Like this, and then you can type or mention the name of the attribute that you want to modify. For example, if you want to modify external or internal URL of virtual directory, then you will use internal URL and then type the URL. For example, HTTPS. Let's change it to the default one. Slash. ECP. Press enter. So as of now, the internal URL says HTTPS mail dot office 365 concepts dot com slash ECP. We have changed this URL to exchange dot office 365 concepts. Now let's check. This virtual directory again. And here you can see this URL is changed. So let me change this again. To the original URL. That is mail dot office 365 concepts dot com. Press enter. So the internal URL is changed to mail.office365concepts.com. If you do not want to modify these virtual directories one by one using PowerShell or Exchange Admin Center, you can use a script. Go to browser. And here you will type Exchange. This is configure exchange. URLs dot P. 
PS1 script. And here you will see an article for github.com. It says exchange server URL configuration scripts. Go to this article. And on this article, you will see two scripts. Configure exchange URLs script and get exchange URLs script. The first script that says configure exchange URLs, you can use this script to update the internal and external URLs automatically. I will show you practically how you can do this. And get exchange URL script will display all of the internal and external URLs of exchange server virtual directories. So let me show you how to use these scripts one by one. Click on this script. And copy this entire script from this page. Till finished. And go to a notepad file. Paste it and then save this file. Let's save this in C drive and let's give it a name. Configure URLs.ps1. PS1 is the extension for script files. So let's save this, close this, and let's open this script and copy this script as well. Till here, go to Notepad, paste it, and let's save it in C drive with name verify urls.ps1. So we have saved these two scripts. Now you can close the browser. Make sure you are saving these scripts on the Exchange server because we will be running these scripts on the Exchange server itself. So these scripts are saved in C drive. So we will go to C drive. And now we will run these scripts. First, we will run configure URLs script. Press enter. Now this will ask you the name of your exchange server. Type the name of the exchange server. We have only one exchange server. So let's press enter. Now this will ask you what internal URL you want to set for the virtual directories. For example, I want to set office 365 concepts.com. Press enter. Now this will ask you what external URL you want to set for virtual directories. Here you will type office 365 concepts.com. Now if you will press enter, these two URLs will be binded within the virtual directories. We have already modified internal and external URLs for all the virtual directories except auto discover and outlook anywhere. So I will not be running this script. So I'll press control C to finish this script. So let's run the second script that will list all the internal and external URLs. And that is verify urls.ps1. Again, this will ask you for exchange server name. We have only one server press enter. Now this will list all of the URLs, including internal and external URLs for all the virtual directories. So here we can see Outlook Anywhere. We haven't changed any URL for Outlook Anywhere. So that is the reason it is showing exchange.office365concepts.com. We have changed for Outlook Web App to mail.office365concepts.com for ECP. It is changed for offline address book or OAB. This is changed and this is changed for AWS, MAPI and ActiveSync as well. So we haven't changed the URLs for auto discover and outlook anywhere because there will be a dedicated video for these topics. So we will discuss these virtual directories in detail. So this is how you can configure internal and external URLs in your exchange server. I haven't discussed other DNS records like MX and CNAME. We will be talking about these DNS records when we will discuss email flow and auto discover in detail. In the next video, we will be talking about architecture of mailbox databases in Exchange Server. And we will also talk about how to manage mailbox databases in Exchange 2019. So this is all for now. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.